Hello guys and welcome to a special edition of the Escapade podcast today where we are joined by up and coming brand new author Chris McQueer with his debut book Hings <laughs> Short Stories in that yeah. Welcome Well we have heard about you recently Aye. Um <laughs> Through one through of Jack. Our, through young He's actually Jack. in the studio with us just Top now, now yeah. in the background. <laughs> Mediating this. <laughs> controlling the whole operation, <laughs> Jack. <laughs> and he kind of put us onto your book recently where you've basically just started throwing some stuff out on Twitter. Aye, now, man. how long ago was this and how quick has the turnaround been? Uh, it's been it's been mental. It's about um it's about when was it? It's about March last year. I put my first short story online and then Within a year, like I'd signed a book deal, and fuck, it's just before I knew it, you know what I mean? It just all happened so quick. It's just been a total whirlwind. It's been amazing. Man. Was just, was it like a blog site? Like, to, uh, it's a short story, then obviously it's on Twitter. Aye, but aye, you just like, promote um, it through Twitter, and then like. Aye, that's it. Um, just I was putting on this website called Medium.com. It's like an you know, like, social network for like, writers, and that. You can just you can put your stuff on there, and then like, other writers will, other writers will like, critique it and they'll give okay. feedback and all that. And, um, so I was putting it on there, and then like sharing the link on Twitter. And um, just I uh, just went mental. That's so good. Say. <laughs> it's the Twitter's that amazing thing though. If you come up, if you've got stuff, something that's quirky, mm-hmm. and the Twitter aye. will just pick it up. Aye. Do you know what I mean? It's aye, like it's, if you watch anything that goes viral, it's just it's got those you know key elements that just aye. catch aye, the attention of people. You know what I mean? What gave so, you the the <laughs> ideas then for like obviously you know you obviously are, you're, you're a funny guy because I've read some of your stories <laughs> and they are I mean they're they're, they're, they're bursting out laughing <laughs> material Cheers, man. and they're so ridiculous as well oh, do you know well, what I mean and, and that's you twisted beautiful. me <laughs> <laughs> and that's the beautiful thing about comedy though is you can just run wild with things Aye. that would you know would either sometimes happen or you bend the truth but Aye. what kind of gave you the ideas and and what made you really start putting your material out there. Yeah. I don't know what gives me ideas, just kind of like, I just take like stuff that's happened to me and like, like stories that my pals tell me, like things that have happened to them and then I just kind of blow them out of proportion, know what I mean, I just take them to the extremes, know what I mean, just stuff like that and then like, it took me a good while to see like to work up my confidence to like, to, like share my stuff online man, mm-hmm. it took me like months <coughs> man, like mm-hmm. so there was about two months between finishing writing my first story and putting it online because mm. I was like too fear about people would think mm. about me. I thought, so I can't put this out there, man. Like, mm. my pals are just going to think I'm mental. Like, they're just going to think I'm some kind of weirdo, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I let my girlfriend read it and I let my mom read it and they're like, ah, that's, that's decent, man. Like, you should like, put it online. So, like, a lot of people read it decent, mate, you know what I mean? I was like, I don't know, I don't think so. <laughs> too worried about what people would think, you know what I mean? Mm. But uh, my mother taught me into it and uh, I'm so glad she did. Like, it's just. So what was, what, was the, what was the first one you put out? The first one I wrote was, um, was a story called The Moth and um, it's, based a, it's based after a story I happened to, it was like a pal of one of my mates, he was walking down England and he was driving his works van and this moth flew in through the window and it flew into his ear and he fucking he couldn't get it out man, he's like, ah oh, fuck man, he's fucking nearly crashing and all that, he had to go to like, for me, uh, accident emergency to get it out, so he's trying to put it in man, he's pushing it in further man, and he's like, ah, oh. <laughs> he was freaking out so he was, and uh, I was like, oh. I was sitting there and like, freaking out like, why would a moth fly into somebody's ear? I was like, obviously it's trying to take out his mind. Yeah. That's, that's a rock story about this moth trying to take out this guy's mind. And um, so you can see why I was worried about people think I was mental. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I won. Uh, I think be, being someone creative though, um, you, you've you've got to be at your mind. Aye, uh, you know, you, you've got to be a bit mental. Aye. Um, because that's that's the thing, you know. Like I suppose that's a, it's a good way to really kind of kick the podcast off. Is like. A lot of creative people, I mean, yourself included yeah, yeah. Or, or whatever, it's putting your work out on the line for, for others to like to showcase your work and, and put that out there. Aye. It's scary because Aye, you are, you're, you're putting yourself out there for ridicule or, Aye, man. or that, whatever it may be, your judgment. Like you're, <coughs> feels like you're burying about. your soul, doesn't it? It's, yeah, yeah I mean, absolutely. <laughs> especially if you put a lot of time into something. Aye, Aye. And I was talking to a, a client there last week about it and they'd been like producing music for like a year. And they're just like really, really apprehensive about putting it online mm-hmm. because, like, this, they're aware that the, the quality isn't what their aye. favourites are. Aye, aye. So yeah. they're like, I don't, I know it's not of that quality, but mm-hmm. they still put so much work in it. So they're aye. scared of what anyone's going to say, aye, you know. Certainly. And it's like, I think any any creative brain, whether it's music, YouTube, mm-hmm. and writing, mm-hmm. um, you know, we've all got that sort of fear. But 
I was going to take your, your missus talks. Aye, I'm glad she did. Because you never know what's happening if you don't do it, though. I know, that's, no, that's, that that's, that's a cool it. thing. That is it, definitely. I mean, one of the things as well is I look how many, especially in the music side of things, um, probably, you know, even in the uh, the book world, there'll be so many people that have, have had a one-hit hunt with Wonder. Aye. And then it's like, there's no follow-up, Aye, you know what I mean? Or like, Aye. you know, they're so, mm. they're so defined by that first Aye. track or that first Aye. book or whatever that Aye. nothing's ever as good. So that's obviously a scary thing as well. It's like if you have one that goes mega viral oh, and you're like, oh my God, I need to live up to that aye. every time. So that's an added pressure. Aye, man. Yeah, for sure. Aye, aye. But that doesn't seem to be the case because everything I've read so far has been great. Aye. Now, the, the, the really cool quote on here that I'd, I'd, I'd actually heard before was, um, Lemmy meets Irvin Welsh. Wow. Aye, I know, man. That must be pretty aye. scary to hear that, you know. <laughs> So even like my publisher they like, sent the book out uh, sent the book out to people to try and get quotes just before it got published and then um, they sent the quote it was you and Denny there's Lincoln Law in the day loads of your videos on YouTube and that class and uh, that's what he sent back my publisher like, oh, I've had the first quote back do I read it and he sent us it and I was like ah, no wow. way man <laughs> just made my life <laughs> it's amazing, amazing. Yeah, so yeah. it's just that's two of my heroes you know what I mean the two guys that have influenced me the most and then yeah. to be compared to them I was like ah, yes man I know. So, <laughs> you're doing something right aye. you actually met Lemmy I met Lemmy, aye, he's sound ass, he's so cool. When man. was that? How did that happen? <laughs> I, mean, I met him at, um, I met him twice, I met him, both at like, his book signings. The first one I met him at, it was two years ago, it was at the end of my book festival, and uh, I was just, I was like a nervous wreck meeting him, I felt like, you see like the wee lasses that meet Justin Bieber on the stage? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I felt like, man. Exactly like that. <laughs> exactly like that. And um, I had all sorts of stuff I wanted to say to him, like, oh man, like, I love you. Of your like all your kind of darker stuff, and, all that, blah, blah, blah. and I just go there. I, was, I, I, I love you, man. Like <laughs> that's all I could say. And he's like, all right, kill me, man. Like <laughs> try to get me away. You know what I mean? <laughs> but then, um, I, <laughs> and then like, um, and then I met him uh, a few months ago. His book tour for his, his new book, that's a lot. Met him in Orange Mall, and then um, I had like, a wee preview of my book to give him after my publishers, and then um, I went like, all right, mate, fucking good to meet you, you know. Kidding on, but the first time hadn't happened, you know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, oh, good to meet you. Can I give you that? And then um, I handed him my preview, and he's like, You're Chris McWheel? I was like, What the fuck, man? This couldn't be so Couldn't believe it. And then um, he's like, ah, I've read your stuff online now. He's like, Ah, oh, it's brilliant. Fucking, you're doing well now, like, all the best and that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's amazing, isn't it? I freaked out again. That was me. <laughs> 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 so, how many stories are in the book? Uh, 25. 25? 25, aye. I mean, so it's like I'd seen uh, I'd seen some reviews and that, and some guy had said how he'd went on holiday with the book or something, just read it start to finish, nah. just <laughs> straight away, <laughs> and absolutely loved it. <laughs> um, what has it been like, Twitter wise? Like, how, how many followers did you start off with when you started putting stuff out there? Aye. Where are you at now? That's just went. Mental. I had, I had a good wee following, but then see when I started putting stories online, it just went, mm-hmm. meant, it just went wild. Like, just so many people buying into it. Like, cause I was doing like one a week. There was a wee bit of pressure on me to do one a week, and for that, I was just like, oh, like, everybody was like sharing it with their pals, pals, their pals, and, all, and mm-hmm. just getting so many followers. And I think that's what kind of brought me to the publisher's attention. You know what I mean? Cause that's it's cool. class. I think as well. Like, see, Scotland is smaller than you think. So yeah. See, like a Lemmy. Like, if, if he hears any up and coming. Aye. Like artist coming mm. into the scene who uh-huh. somebody's shouting about, man, right. he's immediately on his. That's he's going to know about it. He's going to know about it, and that's a really cool thing about it. Like mm. more people know than you think. Aye. It's <laughs> such a small community, know. you know, and like especially in the arts, that Aye. the ravens just ring around and it's <laughs> doing it, you know. I know. Just before we started as well, I'd said to you how I'd met a woman, and uh, we were just talking about our podcast, and I'd said how we had Sanjeev Kali on mm. Navid from Style Game, and she was kind of like, oh, that's that's cool, that's cool. And then I told her, I was like, next up we'll get Chris McQueen. She was just like, absolutely <laughs> gobsmacked. And I was like, oh, man, that, that's really, really cool. Yeah, so it's weird. Has, have, have you been now anywhere getting recognised? I mean, it's obviously different when you're an author because you're not aye. always like aye, on right. screen. Aye. But, um, you know, if, uh, what sort of weird interactions have you had? Because earlier aye. on you were kind of saying you forget that not just your friends are buying aye, the book. Right. <laughs> um, so, like, aye, aye, what is aye, um, there? Like, um, well, I worked in a sports group, obviously, and um, for me, like, the Daily Record published a wee thing, it came and done like, a pure cheesy, done like, a photo shoot of me and my work, like, sitting in front of the fit of it, so my book, and um, I think for that, like, people seen that, like, all the kind of regular customers and, that, and my work seen that, mm-hmm. oh, what's this wee guy up to? So like, they'll kind of come in and then, I'll oh, just be serving them as I normally do, and they're like, oh, I bought your book, you know, and I'm like, oh, that's weird, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, um, like, a couple of weeks ago, I was on the till myself. I was a pure big queue, man. There was hundreds of customers moaning that. Like, oh, I was just, how you, how you the old man on that? How can, how can you on a short list? Like, oh, I'm like, a break, man. I just walk here, you know what I mean? But um, there was a lassie <laughs> right at the back of the queue, 
she, like, she wasn't buying it, she just had my book in her hand. I was like, oh, no way, man. Like, <laughs> and then Sammy, so I'm rattling through, trying to see everybody, and she comes up, she's like, oh, can I just get you to sign my book? Wow. It's not fun, isn't it? <laughs> just makes your day, you know what I mean? It's just, aye, just top class. So you're still it's, working there then? Aye, man, aye. aye. So it's like, it's, it's funny that it's like the crossover from what you love doing. Aye. Came into your actual work there, aye. with somebody queuing aye. up. Do you know what I mean? That's aye. It's quite it's something. Just like, Kept the two of them separate, you know what I mean? We're in my work, I don't really, <clears throat> don't really talk much about it, yeah, yeah, I don't really yeah. talk about it, you know what I mean? Just, I know a lot of my pals stuff at Fit One and that, and then mm-hmm. when I leave work, it's like, it's like leaving, like, living like kind of two lives or something, you know what I mean? Right, like, yeah, my yeah. days after I'm doing stuff like this, and then back in work tomorrow, you know what I mean? It's weird. What's, what's your goals in terms of like maybe doing it full time then? Is that what you're doing? Aye, aye, that's my goal. So that would be the next kind of thing I'd probably build into. That's us. definitely, that's my next step. Such a huge, aye. huge thing to actually jump and do. Aye, yeah. the most scariest thing I've done. I've done it in May 2013. Right. I remember the date. When I, when, I get, when I get laid off <clears throat> from my last job, right. I just thought, right, this is going to be, the next few years are going to be horrific. Hell. Know. <laughs> so like yeah. emotional, like you know, no cash, no holidays, no nights out, no nothing, but it's that kind of thing. It's scary. Aye. But like waking up and then knowing that you're just, you're dedicating everything. And my, and my version of it was like music and business. Aye. You know what I mean? So yeah. like by yourself, you're like trying to visualise how that'd be every day, Aye. just That's writing. Cool. It's amazing. So uh, that'd be good That's to see. Cool, the beautiful thing is though, it totally can happen. Cause Absolutely. I mean, there, yeah. there's a living proof Aye. right there. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's came to fruition. You know, Aye. literally just through throwing some stories online. That's it, man. Do you know what I mean? That's committing, isn't it? Because mm-hmm. it's saying you're going to do it, doing Aye. it, That's it and then like just following through and Aye. just keeping that, you know, like, um, repetition. Aye. Like. Like, I've had like a history all through my life, like starting things and no finishing them, no sticking at them. Mm-hmm. I mean, I did like taekwondo when I was younger, I've done it for six months, patched it. Mm-hmm. Guitar lessons, same again, six months, get bored of it, patched it. Mm-hmm. And then like sitting down and writing a book, that's the first thing I've stuck with right to the end, you know what I mean? And she, like, Oh, I'm quite proud of it, you know what I mean? Mm, I've finally seen something totally like right. and buzzing it, you know what I mean? And just so chuffed at the shit though. Oh, that's amazing, it's, man. It's class. And that's <laughs> a huge well done. It's like, I think like in your twenties though, that's what's that's what what's meant to happen. You mm-hmm. start things, you ditch them, Damn. start things, you ditch them, then before Damn. you know it you go, Do you know what? I actually like this. This is what I like. Yeah. And then you start to kind of mature a bit and Damn. you get that awareness, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And then you know it's but I think it's, it's all good, your mate is just Smash through loads, you're the same as well. You yeah, know? yeah, oh, absolutely. I've tried a million things, Aye. you know, until <laughs> until I'm doing what I'm doing now. Aye. And you feel it, you know, you, you feel it actually Aye. resonate. You go, draw you know what, this is it. Aye. You know? Yeah, yeah. And the funnest part of, of what we're doing as well is even stuff like this as well, Aye. you know, I absolutely, absolutely love this. And, you know, it's, 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 it's like, it's good to see things like this happen in Scotland as well, Aye. you know, like young guys like yourself out there absolutely pushing it and Aye. just not caring That's and just saying, you know what, I'm going to put it out there. What, um, you know, obviously, when you're writing this, you you must have a smile on your face all the time. Like, what the hell is this I'm writing? And the fact that it's all written in like total Scottish banner, Aye. like the way people speak. Aye. And um, what sort of one was the the, the 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 what is the best one for you that you've written? Best and one. and compared to favorite that, one maybe. I wish your favorite and like what has had the biggest response. Favorite one I wrote. Um, I wrote one. It's called the budget. It's the last story in the book, right? And um, I wrote that. And I sat down after I'd wrote it and I was like, what is wrong with you, mate? Like, what is wrong with you? I was like, you've got something wrong with you, man. Like, you need help, man. I wrote a story, it's about a budget, it's about an old guy, his name's Eddie. His wife just died. She's bought me budget to kind of keep him company. Right. But the budget just starts tormenting him. It just ruins this guy's life. And then uh, me, it's wings fly off the gross human arms. And it's just fucking abusing this poor guy. So it's, <laughs> and then uh, I was like, I wrote that and I was like, Thank you, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but uh, my favourite one I wrote, man, it's a, the kind of best response. It's a story called Bulls, and uh, it's the longest one in the book, so it's like 30 odd pages long. It's the longest thing I've wrote by some distance. And uh, that's the one that everybody, like, whenever I say to them, oh, look, what was your favourite story in the book? That was Bulls, mm-hmm. first one, you know what I mean? Okay. So um, it's just, it's also set in a bowling club, just about this mad woman. She's based on my granny. Her name's, her name's Big Angie. She's just rough as. And, um, She's out trying to help this woman kind of get revenge on her kind of abusive husband. Sounds it's not as deep as it sounds. Not I mean it's just yeah, yeah. just a laugh. Not I mean. Yeah, right, uh, okay. Nice. But that one's had this sort of big thing. So aye, is that man. is that maybe led you to think that maybe you need to write some bigger ones or aye, longer ones? Then I but... want to. I've always kind of because like likes of Twitter and all that's just ruined my attention span. So like, mm-hmm. so I like writing short. So I've stuck to writing short stories because you can do it in a week or two weeks. Mm-hmm. You don't get bored of it mm-hmm. and it's done. I mean, you can move on to the next one. Yeah. But. Uh, like came in to writing bowls, I think I wrote that the other end to like I done like a night class at college and it was nine weeks long. So sticking into that, sticking into that for nine weeks was it was hard, but um what like, it showed me that I could do it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to move on to try and write a novel. 
so they mm. uh, just see how it goes, man. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. It's the next kind of logical step, isn't it? Like, aye, if you commit to doing something like that, then aye. the next challenge, I guess, would be like kind I of the stakes so, a little aye. bit. Hopefully, man. <laughs> so, see, um, in terms of, it, can I think Stephen had touched on earlier, like the journey from uploading stuff online to aye. the point where you're at now, with your own book being published. How aye. did that come about? How 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 did aye. they get in contact with you, and just how did it develop from there? It was um. I'd been just posting my stuff online, and as well as that, I'd been sending stuff away to like kind of like literary magazines. So it'd be magazines that publish like short stories and poetry and all that. Just try to get stuff published because you need the kind of publishing credentials if you want to get a book published. Yeah. So I was doing that. I felt as if like need to seems to buy these magazines, need to read them. Know what I mean, mm-hmm. I felt like I was better off putting them online, mm-hmm. just getting everybody to read them. Know what I mean, but like sending them to the kind of magazines that gets your stories into like the right people's hands. Know what I mean? Yeah. Get some into like, people in the industry, you know. Yeah, yeah. So um, I sent my away to this magazine that was four or four who published me the the Real Literary <laughs> magazine. And I sent them a story and um, they used it in their first issue. So they're having a lunch party and they said that we're going to get the contributors to come down and like perform some of their work. You up for it? And I'd never done it like that before. Then I was like, only one who can like tell stories on stage. You know what I mean? Like, I can't. You know what I mean? Like there's no demand for that. I don't think. Mm-hmm. I think there was mm-hmm. a whole. I had no idea about the whole spoken word scene, but. Um, I was like, I don't know. I said to my man, I was like, they've asked me to do this, I was like, I'm just going to patch it. She's like, yeah, if you're not, like, go and do it. Mm-hmm. Don't be stupid, you know what I mean? Just go and do it. I was like, right, fine, fair enough, man. Went through it in, but I did it. And um, I had to say to his earlier, I used to have to get Stephen before I could go mm-hmm. on stage. <laughs> so I um, got half cut, I <laughs> went up. And then, um, like that night, like, people that had done them before me, it was all kind of poets, it was all quite serious, quite mm-hmm. kind of intellectual. And I was sitting there like Oh no! Aye man, I've misjudged the tone here badly. <laughs> Coming out I just, aye, I just had one story that I was going to read and it was about a dead dog. I, I saw a woman trying to find a dead dog's body. I'm like, I can't read this man. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, fuck it, I'm going to go for it. I went up and I'd done it, I read that story and then like, I get some response, it was class, aye. everybody was loving it. And then like, I came off stage and then there was a wee break. And uh, Lauren Heller my publishers came up to me like that, like, that was brilliant. Like, I was all oh, tears, and all that. We're maybe going to be moving into like publishing books. Like I was all oh, brilliant. Like I've got a wee collection of short stories. Like would you be interested in having me look at it? Well, I definitely send us it. And but I thought like I can just try to be nice. You know what I mean? That's kind of thing you would say. You know what I mean? So I never thought of anything else. Yet. I never did send them it. And then maybe about six weeks later, I get an email from them like, that, like have you got that short story collection? I'd be want to see it. I was like shit, man. I've been serious. Like, I couldn't believe it. So I, was, I sent them it right away. And all that right, keep them through Edinburgh for a wee meeting. Aye, that's kind of <laughs> happening. Aye, this is man. Went through, man. Next thing I knew, I signed my first book deal, and pfft, so, ah, this is just <clears> wild, man. <laughs> so, where, where can people buy it? Where can people find it right now? Yeah, uh, you can get it for ideally. I would like you to buy it for my publisher's website, fourfrank.com. So, actually, I get this money. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, I just want people to read it, really. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. feel free, man. Like, you can get it for Amazon. You can get it for Waterstones. Well, obviously, it's not I mean. Um, aye. And we'll okay. stick links in. I spot on. Yes. We'll, get, we'll uh-huh. get it out there. Preferably yeah, to their website. Aye, <laughs> so, like, so that from there, what other comedy shows have you done, or are um, you doing any more planned, and are you going to change the format anywhere? Yeah, uh, I've been doing like loads of like spoken word kind of stuff, so it's normally like a ten minute sets, just go up and tell a couple of stories. But um, I had a chance. I was up at Belladon Festival and had a chance to do it. It's like the first kind of like one man show kind of thing. But uh, I don't know. I don't really. I don't think I applied myself right. You know what I mean? So I could have. I could have made it better, you know what I mean? I could have made it better show, you know what I mean? I just went up and told stories for 45 minutes and kind of... It didn't really go as well as I'd hoped, mm. you know what I mean? It could have been better, so... Well, I've kind of learned from that, you know what I mean? That's, well, that's you know exactly what I was about to say there. Yeah. You, you need to go through those experiences to I, feel what it's I, like I, when you, you I, nail something. That's it, man. Like, ridiculous. Definitely. It's the end of the days where you're just writing, you're just starting off, and you know, I, you're usually behind closed doors, so then to be I, performing, I, is, it's I, a completely I, different ballgame. Definitely. Game. But then, for that, um, I had my book launch after that, and it was in Edinburgh. And um, I kind of learned from that and I kind of made it my show. So I read that story at the budgie and uh, I got my mate Ross, he looked dressed up as a budgie, so he did. <laughs> and he kind of like, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's good. So, um, just why do my stuff like that? I mean, just make but it my show, you know what I mean? Nice, slide it up a bit, you know what I mean? What, what is your, have you got anything in the horizon at the moment? Um, I just did the Edinburgh Book Festival last night and then How that's was like, that? Ah, it was class. That was just class, you know what I mean? Like, being to see Lemon there two years ago, seeing Urban Wells there and then you'd be performing. Like, mm-hmm. Or the same kind of stage that they've done, I mean, I was like, oh, yes, man, this is mm, right. getting there, know I mean, I'm getting there. And then, um, that was brilliant, man. So okay, like, so um, there, and where, where else have um, you got in? This is it, no, this is it, really. Um, this is like, that was like my kind of last 
kind of reading yeah. through the book for the next few weeks. I'm semi got to college and that now, so I need to kind of get my head down and focus on that. But rather than doing readings that now, I'm going to be I'm writing like kind of comedy sketches. A couple of guys, um, semi Dave and Chris, they're called Grave Day Productions. They make me sketches and that. So I'm going to be working with them, kind of moving into like writing for the telly, <coughs> like kind of comedy right. sketches and that. Probably. So I'm going to be putting them online, and see how that goes. And that thing. So that's what I'm going to kind of throw myself into next. And that's excellent. Obviously, writing my next book. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. See how it goes. That's a really interesting sort of industry to get into because again, Aye. because the, the Scottish scene's quite wee, once you get in there and maybe get one proper story out or Aye. on telly, then you'll, you'll just keep stop following so, man. I'm so. sure it will. <laughs> I'm sure it will. So we'd mentioned earlier that you'd um, you'd done stuff with Young Enterprise Scotland before. Aye, who, actually, we're kind of partners with them and we do Aye. a lot of programmes with them. They're they're, they're absolutely brilliant. Aye, class. Um Aye. where where did you where did that happen? When was I um, I was I was nineteen, twenty five now, I was nineteen when I first got involved with Young Enterprise Scotland. Um I'd done it was a the Inspire course it was called. So it was like um it was like a year long course and at the end of it the goal was to have you ready to go and go into the world of business. You'd have your business plan, you'd be ready to go and get funding, you'd be ready to just go and make a right good mm-hmm. go at it, know what I mean? But um but I was nineteen I was just I was quite naive, know what I mean? I just I didn't have the right people, I was just kind of daft, you know what I mean? I just had an idea for a business and I was just assuming, I was like, people just got to throw money at me for this. And this is going to be, you know what I mean? Just what was your money. idea? It wasn't the worst idea in the world, but it's not the best either, you know what I mean? It was, um, it was like, see when you've got your telly on the wall, right? You kind of, you've got it on your feature wall and it looks quite cool. It was like a kind of, my idea was like a kind of clip-on frame for when you're telly. I mean, so you could still have like the black frame in your telly, you could have like diamond or something, something sparkly, you could have it match your wallpaper or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, Ah, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Just wasn't up too much. <laughs> I was not expecting that <laughs> at all. Lessons learned, though. I, I definitely, man. I kind of matured me a bit, you know what I mean? Because to me, I just realised like, how daft I was, you know what I mean? But um, I learned so much here by working for Young Enterprise Scotland. Like, mm-hmm. They just did drum into you, like, a good work ethic, you know, mm-hmm. and they show you, like, how to make a right good go things and they give you a bit of confidence from right? school as well you know, Aye, like, it, man, right? see because you've left school there's like an added bit of pressure like right I better listen to what somebody's saying aye, here definitely you know, aye. and they're kind of well placed to do that they're, they're really aye, good definitely aye and what were yeah. you like then like in school like growing up were you always like were you always trying to like write things or was that just did that come a lot later ah it's kind of came later in life but um, I was always like always enjoyed it, you know what I mean? See, like, in English in school, they would say to you, we create writing kind of tasks, like, go and write a story about a superhero or something. Mm-hmm. But um, I was never really into the kind of stuff they wanted you to write about. Like, I just wanted to do my own thing, you know what I mean? But, um, so I was a wee bit frustrated, because I liked writing, but they all wanted me to write stuff I didn't want to write. And I wasn't for doing it in my spare time, I was too busy like, playing football, getting mad at it, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, um, I, <laughs> So, um, I, at school, it was all right, at school, just kind of, it was all right, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, it wasn't until kind of a year and a half ago I thought right, I can I could do better than what I have been doing. You know what I mean? And then so this is me like getting back into education, trying to make a mm-hmm. so I get a better head on me now. You know what I mean? I'm is it related to what you're wanting to do? What you're going to? Like, ah, it's creative writing. I'm glad to do. I'm glad to do creative writing. Just um, I like it better because I like to make a living for it. You know what I mean? So I need, yeah, I need to get better. Aye, ah, yeah, that's it. So just build that knowledge. That's it. Man. Just need to try and get better. What so, would you say to like you know any other creative person kind of who feels that? You know they're not really conforming with what's been told to them, but they've got this idea. But you know, what would you say if they've, you know, if they want to go and achieve something like you've done, like hey. to try and encourage them? Where do they start? I just um, well, I would, I would recommend putting your stuff online. Like just try just and get it out there. I try and like, don't be fear, don't be shy. Like I know it's scary and all that. Try and get your stuff out there. But um, that's just that's the first hurdle. I mean, as I'm saying, it's like um, everything you've ever wanted is on the other side of fear. Like mm-hmm. that's so true. Like mm-hmm. no one holding you back as yourself. Not yeah, exactly. Don't, Try not to be worried about what your pals and I think just because you'll be surprised by the reaction. What I mean, I was, mm-hmm. and then um, just get a go, man. Don't be fear. Just get a good go. That's what mm-hmm. I'd say. Really. You were saying earlier, like um, obviously now your your sort of fan base of following online has has really increased. Mm-hmm. You you kind of you said you had quite a decent following. So what, how was that? Had you already just started throwing stuff out there? And I, like, were what other pages and stuff picking up your stuff and sharing it, or did that come later? Aye, it was like um, just I'd been on Twitter for years, man. Like, it's just it's class, you know what I mean? Just you can just talk to you, like, just randomers, you know what I mean? Like, just talk about people you've got common interest in, you know what I mean? Yeah. You can just get a bit of, bit of banter there, and it's good. And uh, like, so I was just doing that, I was talking to hundreds of people on it, and then through that, like, cause like, I always talk to people, you know what I mean? So you get loads of followers that way, and uh, I was just I was started. Like, doing like wee threads, we kind of like comedy threads, like we, like, it's actually with like, 
like write a kind of like stand up comedy routine. I would like kind of put it into three or four tweets in daily third, mm-hmm. and then people were liking that, and then we just kind of doing like daft weird tweets, and then like for that the natural progression for that just felt like then but it's really like short stories, you know what I mean? Like, and then for that it's just. Fair man, eh? It's just really kind of grown. Aye, man. <laughs> okay, so that's it. Again, it's just commitment, isn't it? It's like doing what you love doing, putting it out there. And aye. No, everyone's going to love it. Aye. It's not, you're never going to impress everyone. It's another key thing. Me. Like, you know, probably get a lot of people going like, right, I'm not into that. Aye, aye, aye The aye, equal aye. amount will be like, no, aye, I'm not into that. Aye, so. Try and focus on the good stuff. Of course, man. That's, aye. Aye. <laughs> that's brilliant. I think ultimately that's it, as you're saying. It's just getting the content out there, overcoming that fear. Everything is a mindset, you know. Aye, that's it. And most people, you know, they, they, they will. They'll be kind of scared to out the boundary. Or, aye, or, definitely. Or say, am I going to offend people? Or aye, I think aye, ultimately your stuff is either going to do that or it's not. I know, that's it. You've got to just get it out there because ultimately Aye. it's funny stuff. And <laughs> people people need to be reading it. So what are the next steps coming from Chris McQueer? And again, where can people follow all your stuff and that? Um, next steps, I'm going to be writing. Also, as I was saying, I'm going to be writing comedy sketches and that. But um, obviously writing short stories, that's my thing. Really. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm into. So um, my next book's going to be, it's going to be more short stories, but they're going to be a wee bit longer. You know what I mean, it's like some people Based on the reviews for this book, they were like, they were good, you know what I mean? But like, wish the stories were a little bit longer. Bit but more I mean, like, aye, you know what I mean? Like, you could do more with them, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's alright, so I've kind of taken that on board and then um, mm-hmm. fair writing stories like bowls, longer ones. Mm-hmm. Like, I really enjoy it, you know what I mean? It gives you so much more freedom you know, to develop characters and mm-hmm. just make things a bit more mental, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's good fun, you know what I mean? So, um, aye, next book's going to be longer, short stories, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know you <laughs> <laughs> And then after that, hopefully a novel, you know what I mean? Just trying. That's what I'm going to college for, just try and get better at writing so I can try and write a novel. And then, after that, I don't know, man. Do it <laughs> Aye, hopefully, man, that's the plan. So. Can I ask about, like, your sort of creative mindset when it comes to writing? Like, so, do you have a specific place you go? Is there, like, a routine before you go, right, you know, I'm going to write today, I need to go and grab a coffee, sit down at this particular table before I know that, you know, it's all going to come out, Aye, it's a like set way you do it? Aye, it used to be like... Well, I break it up, I work and I, I write around about my shifts, you know what I mean? So I'm either like 10, 6 in work or I'm 2 till 10. So like if I'm 2 till 10, try and get up at 9, I'll be lying, I mean, try and get up at 9, half 9, sometimes 10. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, make myself something to eat and then I like to be sitting at, sitting at my desk in my room for half 10. Right. And then just try and write, write through to 1 o'clock. Just to half 10 aye, and then sit, just go? Aye, just go no for issues. it, man. Just try and, well, so obviously there's kind of writer's block and that gets in the way better. You write something then, anyway. Aye, that's it. Just try and, like, try and write something every day, so I mean, um, that's what I need to do. You need to write something every day. Just in fading that, I was getting into a routine and that, to the point where, like, I couldn't even write. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, I could, if I felt, like, I missed a day of writing, I felt like, I don't know, I felt like I felt like a failure or something. That's I mean, great, like, yeah. I, I know what you mean. <laughs> know what I mean? So, um, that's it, man. Just getting into a routine. So, sitting at your desk, half ten. Aye. Write something every day, even aye. though it might not be great, but it's, aye, it's actually man. probably just training your brain. Aye. It's exactly aye. the same with music. As long as aye. you do something. Aye. Yeah. And so it's like it's just it's just like your idea muscle in it when you when you think about it in your brain. Like if you stimulate it, then aye, you know, one out of ten might be one you'll keep. Aye, that's it, man. But it's that one that ends up being like balls or whatever. You know what I mean? That you keep man. in there. And do you think you're going to focus a wee bit more as well on like uh, performance side of stuff eventually as well? Are you are you, aye, are you like getting that. quite into that? I like yeah. I want, I, would, I would like to try stand up, but um, like you're all saying, like it gave me the feel like it's can it. It's like easy for me because I've got my stuff there in front of me, you know I mean? I can read for it. But when stand up, like, you're just winging it, you know what I mean? Like, you're yeah, saying, man, like... Yeah, 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 well, <laughs> I've then, done a few, and I, it is a scary man, it is I a scary man. So, um, but I'd like to give that a go, like. Yeah. I'd like to give well, that a go. Well, I definitely think you should, because you've got the following for it, um, and you could really use a variation of some of your stories anyway, aye, maybe, you know, aye, whether it even, <laughs> even if it's learning one of your stories inside out and just to live on that, for people that don't actually know you, mm-hmm. they'll just be like, ah, what the hell is aye. that crazy story, do you know what I mean? So, um, it's actually stand up as a storytelling, it? it is, I suppose, aye, it is the same thing, thing really, aye. that's what the best ones do. Oh, that's mm-hmm. it. That's it. It's aye. about manipulating the truth and aye. and and, and, and just uh, like and someone told me as well, you know, it's like eight percent of it's your body language. Aye, so it's aye. like um, point, you know, you'll see some comedians will go out there and they look scared and straight away you're like, 
You did aye, not funny. Aye. So a lot of it is all about your presence aye, on stage. Aye. If you look confident, they're going to listen. Do you know what I mean? Aye, so definitely. just like what you done, great. Like you yeah. didn't really revive anything. No, no. <laughs> but right. because he's the character and like the yeah. body language, it was like it was, all, it was almost like it was funny anyway. Aye. aye. No matter what you were saying, you know. So it's it was like that's kind of worked in your favour. Yeah. yeah, and the thing is, so is I enjoy an accent as well. So you find out your accent into the bargain. <laughs> so that's like you know what you'd work on going back aye. in. Like yeah. Kenny, do you'd work on the revision? Absolutely. Being more prepped. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, that, which is really interesting. That would be my, my bit of advice for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's just really just revise completely Definitely. what it is you're going in and you, you know, just start off with the five minute slots. Right. You know, the I amateur night stuff. Long, <laughs> but as I say, you've got a following there already. You're already getting booked to do shows and stuff aye. like that. I mean, that, that is pretty amazing. Right? That's, you know, that's amazing. That's <laughs> getting good to hear. <laughs> Who's your favourite comedians? I mean, like growing up, it was always Billy Connolly, like, right. and then that's yeah. kind of influenced me, like writing okay. stories. Not being his, like he's a shameless stand up, his kind of storytelling, mm. his stuff is stuff best. stories, it's, and it's amazing, aye. And um, so I, he's kind of influenced me. Um, Frankie Boyle and that Lemmy, obviously. Um, Scottish guys, I, Scottish guys, aye, that's it. So I like to like want stuff, want to like, listen to stuff and read stuff that you can relate to. You know what mm. I mean? Like that's what I'm into. You know what I mean? That's what I've tried to do things, like try and write stories and characters that people can. You can relate to, you know what I mean? They can well, kind of. It's still game. Aye. You watch it and you're like, you know, every day, like every aye, character. Aye. You, know, you know, an Isa. Aye. You know, you know, a Jack, you know, a bit. Do you know what I mean? It's aye, like, definitely. It's because it's a, it's a really, being so relatable is what makes it so good. You know? Aye, that's certainly. Especially in Scotland, I think. It's aye. like, you relate to characters and you just aye. fall in love with them. You know? Are you aye, just going to keep them totally, like, Scottish based uh, going forward or life in the normal? Because obviously, like, as what I was saying, is like, are they in any stores? Or any... Obviously, you can buy it on Amazon and stuff as aye, well. Aye, aye. So you can get it anywhere. Aye. But, um, you know, like a book like that, Mm, aye, would be hard aye, in England because aye, it's written in such Scottish. Aye, man, it's, it's a hard sell, but um, I look at people like Oven Welsh. Like, Oven Welsh's work's been translated into like, Japanese, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And it's big in England as well, so I think mm. like, Scottish, aye, like, Scottish humour is kind of universal, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. It's maybe it doesn't like it, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. You see all these Americans on Twitter, they always talk about like, Scottish Twitter, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, yeah, that's kind of like and, um, what Sanji was saying about still getting yeah. massive in Vietnam. Yeah, yeah, so well, the, the thing was, what, um, what, what Sanji was saying was, um, he was like, he knows Ford Kiernan's a bit of a wider merchant, so he's not sure if that was true or not. But what he said was, because it's now on Netflix, it's been aye, translated into so many right. languages, so and it's meant to be big yeah. in Vietnam. Yeah, that's right. It's still good. I guess once you hit Netflix, you're open. To, you, know, you don't know what we pockets of the world would be quite into. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. It's quite cool. Like, um, something similar that's happened to me. Like, um, when I was putting my stuff on Medium, because like, Medium's a social network for writers, I go in touch with this guy. He's an American guy, but lives in like, a wee like, island in the Caribbean. Somehow he's came across my stuff and he loves it. Wow. So he does. I don't know how, man, because like the first story that he commented on, it was it was all set in a bookie. It's called Scud Book, right? It's all set in a bookie's in Easter. <laughs> <laughs> it's all set in a bookie's in Easter house. And it's about this porn magazine just keeps appearing, they keep trying to read it and it just keeps coming back. I'm like, how's this guy for Puerto Rico came across this? <laughs> you know what I mean? But he was loving it, man. Uh-huh. And um just me and him, like he'll send me stuff that he's written. You know what I mean? He's like old guy in his eighties and he sends me stuff that he's written. He's just never really like he's never really made it, you know what I mean? But he still does it for like a love of writing, you know what I mean? He's lost class, man, eh? And uh, he's just in it for like the love of writing, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? He's retired man, he just spends his days like chilling in the sun writing stories. That sounds amazing. I'm like, he's got it made, you yeah, know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> yeah. And um so I man, it's cool. Okay. So, um, Brilliant, man. Aye, but um I don't know, man. I like writing stuff set in Scotland, you know what I mean? But I see what you're saying, I would like to have more kind of universal appeal. Well, that's it, see, you, know, you as an artist, it's just like being diverse, so it's aye. like, there's, there's nothing wrong with you going, right, well, that's Scottish short stories, I'm going to mm-hmm. try and maybe something a bit broader, a bit more universal. Aye, aye. Maybe, aye. Try it, test it out. Aye, Again, I keep relating it back to music, because that's obviously what I know, but it's mm-hmm. like me writing a house track or a techno track, a trans track, entirely mm-hmm. different markets. Aye. Yeah. But as a, it's kind of challenging yourself almost. Aye, like, can I delve into that? Aye. Let me try it. Aye. Yeah. You never, you might aye. actually really enjoy See it. See what happens, aye, aye. So aye, man. I think I will try and broaden my eyes. But what, what's important though is you, you've started off with a formula that's working, mm-hmm. so yeah. you, you need Stuck to have it more of that. And, you know, what what I really like about your writing um, from what, what I've read so far is just like while I'm reading it, I'm not like struggling. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm pronouncing it the way pretty much 
the way people speak. Aye, aye. Do you know what I mean? Aye. Especially if it's just you and your close mates and you're all aye. talking, it's a bit of slang. Aye. It's like it really just rolls off the tongue exactly aye. the way you'd be talking to your pals. Aye. Sometimes a bit heavier, obviously. Aye. Uh, you know, like, yeah. you know so, some of it's just completely aye. slang. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's just, it is, it's phenomenal. Oh, what is like, was that just you know, growing up while your mates in the band and stuff like that and just saying, I'm going to just write exactly the aye, way we'd be hitting out there and aye. taking a piss and stuff aye, like that. Aye, that's it, man, aye. Because um, I feel like kind of like, like, right the way like me and my mates talk, it's kind of, it's a working class book, but I mean, I feel like mm-hmm. we're kind of underrepresented in like, like kind of world of literature. Print. Aye, man. They never aye, man. Scotland. Aye, definitely. And um, I feel as if there's so many books just written by like, middle-aged, middle-class guys for other middle-aged, middle-class guys and stuff. So that's not what I want to read, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. There must be something for like me and my mates that we would read because my mates really read I thought well I'm just going to write what I want to read yeah. so that's what I've done and then um, wrote it's stuff I man just wrote stuff that I think my pals would like and it's worked <laughs> that's good, it's good okay. man so have you already started the next book? I am three stories into my next book so okay. see how it goes man. how many are you planning just? because I've got a very bit longer kind of aiming for maybe about 20 Okay, well, nice we'll one. See how it goes, man. <laughs> okay then, brilliant. Well, that's a good point to... Absolutely, so yes, uh, you asked that earlier, where can people follow you? Uh, just to <laughs> go over that again. So uh, you also I, your Twitter, is just McQueer, isn't I it? Just, uh, at Chris McQueer. Um, on Facebook, Chris McQueer writer. Just look us up, aye. Excellent, uh, <laughs> it's easy done, look it up. It's a name um, you won't forget, and it is my real name, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and ideally... <laughs> Ideally, you want people to. Where do you want people to buy the book? Go and buy it there. Yeah, aye, can you please buy it for four oh four inc dot com, please? <laughs> Excellent. Well, troops, you've been listening to Chris McQueen here. What a special edition! Yeah. Very, very sound guy. Cheers. His brand new book, Hings, short stories and act. Absolutely brilliant, man. Go and get yourself a copy. Absolutely. Sorry. Escapade episode ten. This was what an episode it was. Thanks a lot for coming. Come on, on cheers for having us. Cheers, cheers. Great stuff. Great stuff. So yes, we'll cheers. see you again next time. Cheers, man. <laughs>